I first down, found out that I was dyslexic, I was diagnosed in, I believe it was second grade. I was struggling with um, learning, and um, my I grew up in uh, Champaign, Illinois, near the you know a university town. So my parents wanted to find out what was going on. So they took me to a hospital to um, get tested. And what I can remember about getting tested was I was in a room with uh, a woman and she was putting these electrodes on my head. And she said, and it was, she was putting on with some white sticky stuff. And um, what I remember her saying, we're going to test you, close your eyes. And I, I don't know what that test did. All I know is there were things on my head that were measuring something. And then when I peeked through my eyelashes, all I could see was snow on the screen. And when we got done, the, we, we were waiting. We were brought to another room. And um, the doctor came in and told my parents that um, I was what he thought was dyslexic, and that meant that I might be mildly mentally retarded, and that those were the terms they used in the 1960s, and that I would probably, that school would always be difficult for me, and that um, I might make it through high school, but that college was just pretty much out of the question. And my mother said to this particular doctor, you're wrong. I have, you know, other children at home, and she never had any trouble until she started going to school. And he gave my mother, you know, a talk on being on denial. <laughs> and my mom was like, we're leaving. Now, I was taught at a parochial school, and the nuns were very strict, and, you know, they, they wanted you to work hard. And I can remember we'd do a round robin reading activity where you'd go and um, take turns reading out loud to the class. And I can remember reading and hearing people go, the other students in my class go, ah, when I'd struggle over the, the sentences. And I believe, and I don't know for sure, but I believe my um, teacher thought that if I read longer passages, I would get more practice. And it seemed to me like I'd be reading this, these really long, for a really long time, and the other kids would get really frustrated with me. And so I was embarrassed, and the more embarrassed I got, the worse, the more I stuttered over the words. And, um, you know, I just was always trying to keep up, but I just couldn't. So it was, it was that feeling of I'm really not good enough. I'm not good at reading, I'm not good at school, I'm dumb. Well, getting through school, high school and college was difficult. I would have to pre-read the chapter before it was taught, then reread the chapter, and then take notes. And a lot of times I couldn't read my notes because the spelling was so bad. But I, it was sheer um, determination of getting through with, through the classes. And I would, I would try to to um, prepare myself so that when I went in, I kind of knew the material before I went in, and then I reread it afterwards to fill in the holes. And my notes, I never could really make heads or tails of my notes because the, of the spelling, and then it, it would, I would, while I was, the teacher was speaking, I was getting down one thought, trying to figure out what I just, how to spell something, and then I'd miss There'd be holes in my notes. I did sometimes would go to a teacher in college and say, I'm dyslexic. If I could have the notes or um, some information about the lesson, that would be very helpful. S teachers weren't, that wasn't a common practice then, and it was difficult to get. But once in a while, a teacher would say, sure, here, here's, a, here's what we talked about, or here's a handout. Dyslexia affects me as an adult, still in my spelling. Um, when I have to write uh, letters on the um, computer, I 
that editing piece. Sometimes it's, it, I left out a lot of words and, um, or I, I thank God every day for the spell check. <laughs> because that's helped me a lot. If I'd had that in college, I probably would have depicted a different major. I would have gone into English or something, but um, that was, it, it, now it's it's not as bad. Dyslexia doesn't affect me as, as much anymore because of the technology we have in place, the spell check, the, um, uh, you know, editing pieces that they have in the, built into the computers. They're wonderful. After a child has been diagnosed with dyslexia and you are going to the schools to try to get an um, IEP or individual education plan, my advice would be not to go alone. Have a professional go because a lot of times the um, accommodations that they will put into place, they put in blank accommodations like extra time, you know, ex the, the notes and things like that. Once, you, a di once you've met one di dyslexic, you've met one dyslexic. dyslexic. Dyslexia does not manifest itself in the same way every time in every dyslexic. So you need to have someone to go with you to the um, IEP meetings that can have an objective uh, uh, perspective of what they're talk of what they're saying about your child, and also someone who knows the lingo of uh, how to get specific accommodations into a, into the child's IEP, IEP plan. And there is specific language that needs to, that is recognized by the school that the school basically needs to have before they can put an IEP in, with accommodations in place. If you don't have the correct language in your IEP, the school doesn't have to rec doesn't have to provide those services, and um, I I don't know all the correct language. Someone someone whose job it is to put that in can be the most helpful in getting what your child needs based on that child's individual needs, and that varies from child to child. And if the if the if it isn't in the the only way I can define it is the legalese of an IEP, then the school doesn't have to provide it. And sometimes these accommodations cost the school money. And, you know, so it, it's a, um, it, it's an important thing for the school to understand what they need and what your child needs. And the best way to get that is to have a professional help you. I think teachers need to understand that um, dyslexia is much more than flipping letters and seeing things backwards. That seems to be um, what, you know, the um, standard um, thought process of that dyslexia has. It's changing, but a lot of people still go back to that. So I think teachers need to understand that it's not it, it's a language-based disability, and it can be remediated by using all the learning pathways at the same time. And I think a lot of times when people say, oh, well, my teaching is multi-sensory, multi in that I have a sand table, I have, um, you know, auditory things that we do, but the, the, for a child with dyslexia, they need to do, learn, through all the learning pathways at the same time so that they're hearing it, they're seeing it, and they're f feeling it all at the same, all together. So we, in, um, when, in your teaching, that's not going to hurt your students that ha don't have a learning disability. Dyslexic, the dyslexic model works for all children. It's not going to hurt the children who aren't dyslexic. So. When you teach, if you teach in a multi-syllabic or multi-sensory way, all at the same time, you, the, you're going to have a richer experience for all your kids. I can remember a while back when someone asked me what it was like to learn having um, dyslexia. 
And I tried to describe it in terms of going on, uh, going on a trip. And when you go on a trip, most cross country, say you were going from Maine to Mexico, you, um, most people would fly. Now, in terms of learning with dyslexia, you can't fly. You, you're, it's, you don't have the ability. So um, you have to walk. And I always say, can you walk from Maine to Mexico? Yes, you can. It can be done. Is it difficult? Absolutely. Are you going to have um, blisters and scars from, go from walking? Yes, you will. But you're going to have a much richer experience of the country and um, the land that you, pass over, that you pass over when you fly. You're going to go through it. So you're going to see things and you're going to do things that are going to um, make the experience so much richer than if you just flew. You're going to learn a lot more. And I think um, that's true with a dyslexic. Is it going to be difficult? It is. And um, that's how learning is for a dyslexic. It's, it's difficult, but you can do it. And you'll probably end up learning a lot more.